Moving on from the um, basic concept of what capacitor is and what capacitance means, we need to talk about the discharge equation. Okay, so so far we've talked about charging capacitors up. The discharge equation is saying, well, okay, I've got a capacitor, I've charged it up. What's going to happen as I discharge it? Okay, really it's the same equation to do with charging it up. Um, so the discharge equation is to do with how the current changes with time. Okay, we've already seen that graph, haven't we? We've plotted this graph last time of current against time. And we know it's this kind of shape. We've worked out the area underneath it to get the charge Q. But we need to actually apply some um, mathematics to that to work out the shape of that curve. Okay, so just to start us off, here's the sort of circuit we're talking about. We've charged the capacitor up to 20 volts. Okay, this side of the circuit is currently disconnected, but I'm going to flick this switch across here, and we're going to watch what happens to the charge over time as we discharge the capacitor. Okay, clearly what's going to happen is some of the um, charge will start to flow around this circuit. Because that's happening, these electrons here are going all the way around, cancelling out these positive charges we've got here. So the charge on here is going to go down. When the charge goes down, the voltage will go down. When the voltage goes down, the current will decrease. Okay, so I'm going to get this kind of decay equation shape of current against time like this. Okay, we can um, start to look at that mathematically. Um, without having to do with anything too tricky like this. Um, so the initial charge stored in this capacitor, well, we did the equation Q equals CV. So we've got 0 0.01 um, farads of capacitance, 10 millifarads is 0 0.01 farads, times 20 volts, uh, gives us 0 0.2 coulombs of charge stored. To calculate the initial discharge current, okay, we know we can do I equals V over R, okay, it doesn't matter what the capacitance is. The current is just determined by the voltage and the resistance. So it's 20 over 4,000, that's 0 0.005 amps, okay, 5 milliamps. So estimate the charge flowing off the capacitor in this 10 seconds, okay? The reason it's an estimate, in this case not a brilliant estimate, is because, of course, this current doesn't remain constant, okay? But what we're doing here is we're taking this graph, which we know is this kind of shape, uh, this kind of shape, and we're turning it into a graph which is sort of this kind of shape when we're hoping that those two, this shape is near enough. If we take these little segments to be small enough, then the shape of this kind of little bar chart is the same as the um, actual curve. Okay, if we made these five seconds, two seconds, one second, they would be better and better approximations. Okay, so to estimate the, fl the charge flowing, what we... Uh, do is to just do Q equals IT, so I'm pretending this current staying constant for 10 seconds. Okay, 5.005 times 10 is 0.05 coulombs. How much charge is on the capacitor now? Well, I started with 0.2 coulombs, 0.05 has come off. Okay, so that leaves me with 0.15 coulombs left on the capacitor. Okay, what's the voltage? Well, we know the equation for voltage. Okay, we know Q equals CV, so V, uh, v equals Q over C. So 0 0.15 coulombs divided by 0 0.01, we're now down to 15 volts. Okay, so in the first 10 seconds, the charge is, uh, sorry, the voltage has already dropped from 20 volts down to 15 volts. Okay, that's like our first part of this bar chart. If we want to know what happens in the next 10 seconds, then all we've got to do is to say, well, now I equals V over R. So now we've got um, 15 over 4,000. Okay, that'll give us a smaller value for the current. We can go around again, and it'll drop to say maybe like 12 volts, and then 10 volts, and then um, 8 volts, and so on. Okay, you can see that this is um, not particularly satisfactory. It gives us a bit of an idea, gives us um, the sort of principle. But really what we'd like to do to get the shape of this curve is a little bit of calculus. Now this might be a bit beyond you at the moment, but as long as you're doing A2 maths, hopefully at some point during the year you'll get your head around this. So let's look at our equation. Our initial current I is V over R, but we also know that Q equals CV, so I can replace um, V with Q over C. So V over R becomes Q over C um, times R. And then I, of course, a current is the rate of flow of charge. So um, in calculus, the way we'd write the rate of flow of charge is dQ by dt. So I've got 
um, this, what they call a differential equation, dq by dt equals minus q over cr. Okay, the minus sign becomes because, of course, this is a discharge equation. Okay, so the um, rate of flow of current is decreasing. Then we integrate it, and um, to avoid adding a constant, we integrate between the limits, and the limits of the integration are the initial charge, which we call q naught, and the charge at some time, which we call q between time which starts at zero and ends up at some time we call t. Okay, so what I want is I want the q with the dq, so I've taken the q down here and made one over q on this side, and I've taken the dt up there. Okay, c and r are constants for a given um, setup, so I need to do the integral of one over q. Well, at some point you will learn the integral of one over q is the natural log of q. And if I do that between the limits of q and q0, that side becomes the log of q minus the log of q0. These are natural logs. Okay, and then the integral of minus 1 over crdt. Well, don't get too confused by that. All this is just a number, so it's like doing the integral of 4dt, let's say, is just 4t. Okay, so that becomes t over cr. So the log of q, q over q0, so this is log rule, so the log of a minus the log of b is equal to the log of a over b. Sorry, the log of a over b. So I've got the log of q over q0 is minus t over cr. The way we get rid of the log sign is to raise both sides to the power of e. So I get q over q0 equals e to the minus t over cr, or q equals q0 e to the minus t over cr. This is the crucial equation. If all of this is a complete mystery and you wish I'd never done it, don't panic, because all you need to do is to understand this equation. Okay, it's worth saying at this point that although we've done this derivation for q, we know that q equals cv, so I could have written, um, instead of q, I could have written cv, and instead of q naught, I could have written cv naught. I don't really need to write c naught because the capacitance is a constant. So I could then cancel out the Cs, so I get this equation for what happens to the voltage. I know V equals IR, so if I cancel out, if I write the Rs and I cancel out the Rs, then I equals I0, so I get this equation for current. So when I draw this graph of charge against time, or current against time, or voltage against time, they're all exactly the same shape. It doesn't matter what's going on this axis, okay, I'll just change the numbers on this scale but the shape of the graph will remain the same. Okay, you get some, um, as ever, you get some easy questions and you get some hard questions on this. So, um, a 5,000 microfarad capacitor is connected to a 10 volt supply and then discharged through a 2,000, uh, sorry, 20,000 ohm resistor, so the initial current, remember to do the initial current, we just do V equals IR, so I equals V over R, it's 10 volts, 20,000 ohms, so the initial discharge current is 5 times 10 to the minus 4 amps. What's the current after 20 seconds? Okay, well, what we've got to do there is to use our equation for I equals I0, e to the minus 2 over CR. So there's our initial current, 5 times 10 to the minus 4, e to the minus 20 seconds over, and this is capacitance, is 5,000 microfarads. Here's our time, 20 kilo ohms. So if you put all that in carefully to calculator, you get 4.1 times 10 to the minus 4. If you don't do it very carefully, you'll probably get a silly answer, because remember, the answer needs to be somewhere a bit less than 5 times 10 to the minus 4 amps. The PD after 30 seconds, okay, well again, we just put in the numbers into our equation for Vs. Okay, and we end up with 7.4 uh, volts. Again, just check, that's a fairly sensible answer. How long will it take it to get to 2 volts? Well, this is the tricky one, okay, because we're still using this same equation that we've just used, okay, but this time we're trying to find T, okay, so this is where we um, saw our A and B grades out. So we've got 2 equals 10 e to the minus um, this expression. So the crucial thing is how do we get the T out of here? Well, what you do is you divide the 2 by 10, so you get 0 0.2, and then you take logs, okay? So you take the natural log of 0 0.2, that gets rid of this E here, and we get minus T over 100, because all this expression comes to 100. So T is um, minus 
a hundred times log two that might look like a negative number but in fact log of 0 0.2 is a negative number itself so we've got a minus times a minus and we get 160 seconds okay but it's this last one which will be the one that you find tricky okay because you've got to do some quite hard maths with the logs there